So, may I ask you to take your seat so that we can start with a few minutes delay, um, but uh, we should now move forward um, as it was planned. So, let me please start. Uh, dear Governor Raghu Rajan, dear Mrs. Rajan, dear Chairman Jürgen Fitchen, dear Governor Jeremy Stein, dear President Ottmar Issing, dear President Werner müller estel dear distinguished speakers and members of the prize jury, dear colleagues and friends, from many parts of the world, <clears throat> from academia, industry, and politics, dear ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor and pleasure to open the award ceremony for the Deutsche Bank Prize in Financial Economics 2013, followed by the CFS Symposium Banking, Liquidity, and Monetary Policy. This is the fifth time the prize is awarded, which has established itself as one of the foremost tributes and distinctions to honor individual researchers <clears throat> for their outstanding contribution to the field of financial economics and to society. My name is Jan Kranen. I'm a director of the Center for Financial Studies, and I will serve today as the chair of the award ceremony guiding you through the first part of the program. It will be followed by an exciting academic symposium held in honor of this year's prize winner and his influential role in our discipline. The award ceremony will start with a welcome by the chairman of this year's prize jury, Professor Michalis Haliasos. Michalis, the floor is yours. <coughs> So, dear Governor Rajan, dear Mr. Fitchen, dear President Ising, dear Governor Stein, distinguished speakers and guests, dear colleagues and students, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Center for Financial Studies at Goethe University Frankfurt, I am happy to welcome you to this symposium in honor of this year's recipient of the Deutsche Bank Prize in Financial Economics. This year marks the fifth time the prize was awarded and the eighth year since its inception. The prize was established by Goethe University and the Center for Financial Studies to honor an internationally renowned researcher who has excelled through influential contributions to research in the fields of finance, money, and macroeconomics, and whose work has led to practice and policy relevant results. This is a quote from the statutes. It is sponsored by the Deutsche Bank Donation Fund in the Donors Association for German Science, a charitable uh, foundation. The donors are particularly far-sighted in that they not only endow the prize with a cash award of 50,000 euro, one of the highest in the field, but also provide generous funding for associated activities to honor the recipient and to encourage fruitful interaction among researchers, policymakers, and financial practitioners. Today's symposium, following the award ceremony, is the most prominent and important of these activities. The attendance today, as in recent symposia, confirms the public interest in and appreciation for this telling example of corporate citizenship. With funding in place, the responsibility for choosing the most suitable candidate lies exclusively with researchers from academia, policy, and practice. The jury is chaired by one of the CFS directors. I was honored to be the one uh, for 2013. It includes world-class researchers with backgrounds covering different continents. This year, we were happy to welcome Ricardo Caballero from MIT, David Forgetts Landau from Deutsche Bank Research in London, Robert Merton from MIT, Kenneth Rogoff from Harvard, and Raman Upal from Ethek Business School. CFS is represented on the jury by its president, Otmar Ising, the 
chairman of the jury, and the other two directors, this year, Jan Kranen and Uwe Waltz. The School of Economics and Business Administration of Goethe University is represented by the chairpersons of the departments of money and macroeconomics and of finance. In 2013, these were Nicola Fuchsschundel for macro and Jan Kranen for finance, respectively, although I should say that Jan Kranen was not given two votes because of this. The debate is always lively and entirely focused on the research accomplishments of the candidates and their usefulness for policy and practice. While the winner is typically a candidate supported widely by nominating uh, colleagues from all continents, the decision on who gets the prize is not based on a popularity score, but on careful weighing of the strengths of each candidate. When white smoke comes out of the chimney, this is a virtual chimney so far, but we're working on it, we have a unanimous decision on the most suitable candidate. I would like to thank the members of this year's jury for their insightful and constructive input, but also for a smooth and quick convergence to the name of the winner. The most daunting task the jury faces, since this is a prize in finance, is to maintain, enhance, but never diminish the value of the prize to previous awardees. A quick look at the four previous awardees explains this point. In 2005, when it was established, the prize was given to Eugene Fama of the University of Chicago for, and I quote, developing and investigating the concept of market efficiency, a cornerstone in the area of finance. In 2007, the prize was awarded to Michael Woodford of Columbia University for his fundamental contributions to the theory and practical analysis of monetary policy. In 2009, the prize winner was Robert Schiller of Yale University, who received the prize for his pioneering research in the field of financial economics relating to dynamics of asset prices and their metrics. In 2011, the jury chose Professor Rogoff, Kenneth Rogoff, for his pioneering contributions in the field of international finance and macroeconomics, including research on exchange rates and central bank credibility. As a prize focused on financial and monetary research relevant for policy and practice, the Deutsche Bank Prize cannot ignore the sequence of crises that have recently hit the financial sector as well as the real economy. And I think this is reflected also in the choice of uh, awardees. As an academic prize, it needs to be open to proponents of different, even conflicting approaches. This is illustrated by the coexistence of proponents of market efficiency and of behavioral biases on the list of recipients. The underlying principles for the award are quality and relevance, but these do not preclude, and they, indeed they probably invite, controversy and debate. This year we received 263 valid nominations after contacting 4,000 potential nominators from top universities, central banks, and research centers. And the nominations were received from 37 different countries. 42.5% of the nominations came from the USA and about 10% each from the UK and from Germany. 115 nominees were proposed. The second and third highest response rates were observed in Europe and in North America. But interestingly, the highest response rate, albeit with small numbers, was recorded in Africa, a telling indicator of the worldwide appeal and visibility of the prize. This year's recipient of the Deutsche Bank Prize is Raghuram Rajan. When the prize was award awarded early in the year, Rajan was the Eric J. Gleacher Distinguished Service Professor of Finance at the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business and Chief Economic Advisor in the Finance Ministry of the Government of India. Rajan was subsequently appointed Governor of the Reserve Bank of India and we welcome him today in this new capacity. The Deutsche Bank Prize is supposed to honor exceptional academic research that can be applied to policy and practice. This year, the prize honors an academic so intrigued by the power and potential influence of research, 
so that he decided to carry himself the research findings to the policy sphere. Rajan made sure these findings would influence policy in a wide range of countries by his former position as chief economist and director of research at the IMF, as well as in his own native country, India. Rajan's work spans a remarkably broad range of areas in financial economics, most important, most important to the development of economies worldwide, ranging from the central role of banks in creating liquidity and the role of finance in economic growth to the nature of corporations and their financing. Together with the previous award recipient, Robert Schiller, Rajan is among the very few who warned the world about the impending financial crisis ahead of its onset in 2008. In his recent book, Fault Lines, How Hidden Fractures Still Threaten the World Economy, he warns us about the origins and potential consequences of fractures in the world economic and financial system, but he also offers insights as to how they can be handled so as to avoid future crises. Rajan's research reveals deep awareness of the fact that countries or regions may differ considerably in terms of the type of crisis they are facing and of the growth they are experiencing. Although he is a fierce critic of excessive public spending, he stresses the importance of focusing on sustainable long-term growth even when designing short-term measures and that of caring for the demographic groups most severely hit by austerity, such as the poor, the young, and the elderly. These are all important insights, especially in a Europe struggling with the necessity to control its finances, implement reforms, and create hope for the millions of its unemployed, most notably the younger ones, and of those facing financial distress, who often include the elderly. Let me turn finally to the symposium that will follow the award ceremony. There is a saying among people in several countries which goes roughly as follows. Tell me who your friends are so that I can tell you who you are. In planning the symposium, I asked Raghura Jan to tell me the dream team among his professional friends that he would like to join him and us in this symposium. I was very impressed when I heard the list, but I was totally overwhelmed when they responded to our invitation. Practically all of them is, are here, the dream team is here with us today, and it took only one email and a few hours to get each response. I will let you guess who of today's speakers uh, were on that list of Rajan's closest professional friends, but whichever subset you include, I'm sure you will be impressed. Douglas Diamond, the Merton H. Miller Distinguished Service Professor of Finance at the Chicago Booth School of Business, has kindly accepted to offer the laudatory speech immediately after the presentation of the award. Markus Brunemeyer, the Edward Sanford Professor of Economics at Princeton University, will speak on financial dominance or how the financial sector can strategically choose to exhibit weakness so that it becomes impossible for the official sector to draw on its resources. Vera Lacharya, the CV Star Professor of Economics at NYU's Stern School of Business, will speak on the dynamics of growth, debt, and taxation, focusing on the very different incentives for debt repayment that governments in poor countries have compared to those in rich countries, and on how fiscal myopia can lead to excessive buildup of sovereign debt and defaults. Luigi Zingales, the Robert McCormack Professor of Entrepreneurship and Finance at the Chicago Booth School of Business will speak on liquidity and inefficient investments, analyzing the interaction between fiscal policy and risky investment in the presence of non-pledgeable human capital and government inability to commit to the promised level of fiscal intervention. Following Rajan's keynote lecture, a set of distinguished panelists will address the broad issue of liquidity and monetary policy. The panelists are uh, Vitor Constancio, Vice President of the ECB, Otmar Ising, CFS President, and Jeremy Stein, Governor of the Board of Governors of the US Federal Reserve System. On behalf of CFS and of Goethe University, I would like to express warmest thanks to the distinguished speakers who so readily accepted our invitation to contribute to this event. I would also like to express 
deep appreciation for the funding and for the vision that Deutsche Bank provides through its unwavering support of the prize. Last but not least, allow me to thank very much Sabine Kimmel, the responsible manager at CFS, for her excellent and outstanding commitment and her invaluable contribution to today's event. I pass it on now to Jan to introduce Mr. Fitcher. Thank you. Yeah.